The Old Testament reading today is from Amos chapter 8. This is the 18th Sunday after Pentecost. Hear this, you who trample on the needy, and bring the poor of the land to an end, saying, When will the new moon be over, that we may sell grain, and the Sabbath, that we may offer wheat for sale, that we may make the ephah small and the shekel great, and deal deceitfully with false balances, that we may buy the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals, and sell the chaff of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their deeds. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Fear the Lord, you you his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. The epistle is from 1 Timothy chapter 2. First of all, then, I urge that supplication, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, which is the testimony given at the proper time. For this I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. I am telling the truth. I am not lying. I, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. I desire then that in every place the men should pray lifting holy hands without anger or quarreling. Likewise, also the women should adorn themselves in respectable apparel apparel, with modesty and self-control, not with braided hair and gold or pearls or costly attire, but with, with what is proper for women who profess godliness with good works. Let the women learn silent, quietly with all submissiveness. I do not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man, Rather, she is to remain quiet. For Adam was formed first, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived. But the woman who was deceived and became a transgressor, transgressor, yet she will be saved through childbearing if they continue in faith and love and holiness with self-control. This is the word of the Lord. Jesus also said to the disciples, there was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was wasting his possessions. And he called him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Turn in the account of your management, for you can no longer be manager. And the manager said to himself, What shall I do, since my master is taking the management away from me? I am not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do, so that when I am removed from management, people may receive me into their houses. So summoning his master's debtors one by one, he said to the first, How much do you owe my master? He said, A hundred measures of oil. He said to him, Take your bill and sit down quickly and write fifty. Then he said to another, And how much do you owe? He said, A hundred measures of wheat. He said to him, Take your bill and write eighty. The master commended the dishonest manager for his shrewdness. The sons of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than the sons of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of unrighteous wealth so that when it fails, they may receive you into the eternal dwellings. One who is faithful in a very little is also faithful in much, and one who is dishonest in a very little is also dishonest in much. If then you have not been faithful in the unrighteous wealth, who will entrust to you the true riches? If you have not been faithful in that which is in others, who will give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. The Pharisees, who were lovers of money, heard all these things, and they ridiculed him. And he said to them, You are those who justify yourselves before men, but God knows your hearts. For what is exalted among men is an abomination in the sight of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Our text for this 18th Sunday after Pentecost proper 20 is from the Gospel of St. Luke, the 16th chapter. The title of my sermon is Shrewd Stewards. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, sanctify us in the truth, for your word is truth. Amen. Well, nobody likes to be told, you're fired. But the manager in our parable certainly deserved it. He deserved to be fired. Be fired by his rich Lord and told to give an account. Give an account of how poorly you have managed my possessions. Wasting my possessions. The manager was corrupt, dishonest, and unrighteous. But unlike many in today's society who would just run away like fools, the manager quickly ponders, he quickly thinks about a plan to remedy the situation. And he does come up with a shrewd plan, a wise plan for his future. You see, he sees no hope in hard manual labor or begging for money. Probably was older. Rather, he desires to make friends, make friends with the debtors of his Lord by rewriting their bills for a lower amount. Well, God blesses each and every one of us with a portion of money, a portion of possessions to manage. Whether it's a lot or whether it's a little really doesn't matter. But how shrewdly, how wisely we are managing it. Many people will just kind of squander away their possessions, their their money that they have. They'll spend everything they earn. They just don't know how to manage properly. They don't know how to save. And, of course, this gets people in big financial problems as they continue to blow their paycheck on foolish things thinking they can eat out all the time, thinking they can always buy the latest electronic gadget that they really don't need, or buying that big-ticket item, right? It's football season, and we want to be able to see those football games on the biggest screen we can buy. And so we do it without thinking, can I really afford it? And ultimately... Most of us probably can't. Many will also spend money that they don't have. They will spend money on credit, on credit cards. And they will build up such a large debt on those credit cards with such high interest rates that they will have a very difficult time in ever paying them back. And eventually then, they will lose credit, they will lose trust. They will lose the trustworthiness that lenders have, that the bank has with them. And maybe if they've been poor managers, they will also have to file for bankruptcy. Maybe they've been such poor managers even that they will have to have their wages garnished, their cars and their homes repossessed. It may take a person years, many, many years to regain that trust, to up their FICO score again from the 500s up into the 700s, where they will once again be seen by lenders as trustworthy. So, have you been a poor manager of what the Lord has entrusted to you to manage? Have you been wasteful, spending your money foolishly, squandering it away instead of using it for better purposes? If you have fallen into a rut of of being a poor manager, there's certainly help out there for you. There's help out there for you to help you better manage your money, to help you to get out of debt. And certainly many of us are probably familiar with Dave Ramsey. 
and his, even his radio program, but more importantly, he has a, a program that many churches have offered, including ours in the past, called Financial Peace University. And it's a great way to, to help people get out of debt and to start then managing their finances more efficiently. The premise is this. It's a, a, a local nine-week class, and I, I think there actually are a number of churches in our area currently offering it. So if you're interested, it teaches people the seven baby steps to dump debt, to spend wisely, to save for the future, and to give generously. So if you haven't, if you're having problems managing, I'd encourage you to check it out. Check it out if you're struggling with your debt, struggling to get out of the hole, and uh, struggling to manage those finances. As Christians, we, we certainly face daily opportunities in which we are able to manage our money wisely. So I encourage all of you to start thinking about ways that you can be wise managers, make wise decisions in regards to your finances. Let's quit foolishly squandering the gifts that the Lord has given to us away. And use a healthy portion of what God has entrusted to us for something that will last. Something that will last for eternity. Money that will have an effect long after it was spent. Money that will gain friends for eternity. Part of our core values here at Christ Lutheran Church is a focus on reaching. You'll notice it at the bottom of your bulletin cover. We've kind of modified that a little bit more recently as our strategic planning uh, committee has been meeting. And so now it, it says this, reaching out and serving others. So what does this, this mean? Well, we are reaching those in need of mercy. Those in need of compassion and spiritual care. That is a central focus of our ministry. In physical and material needs, helping those with medical issues, helping the poor, helping the homeless, reaching out and helping them. And also then, the big picture of reaching is in witness of Christ's love, namely, his mercy. Next week, and I pray that you'll be able to attend our mission festival weekend here at Christ Lutheran Church in which, which we will focus on that part of our core values of reaching. Reverend Daniel McMiller from the Office of International Mission of the LCMS will be uh, here to speak to us, to preach to us uh, about how we can also continue to be wise stewards in regards to reaching people with the gospel and supporting that important work all throughout the world. So as we look at this text further for today, this gospel lesson, instead of focusing so much on what the manager did wrong, our focus is now drawn to the mercy of the rich Lord. If we look at this parable from the master's perspective or the Lord's perspective, then the focus of the parable is not on the dishonesty of the manager, but it is on the mercy of the Lord. And that's very important. When you think about yourself and when you were born into this world as a sinful human being many years ago or maybe fairly recently, your future, like this manager's, it looked really bleak. So you were looking at an eternal death ahead. You were looking at that death if it weren't for the mercy of the Master, the mercy of the Lord. But God was shrewd. He was wise and He had a plan. He knew that without a Savior from sin that all of you would be lost. So He considered the bottom line and then He took action. He took action by sending His one and only Son, Jesus Christ, 
into this fallen world to have mercy on you. So that your debt has now been paid. Your debt stands clear to this day for your transgressions, for all of your sins. God has been eternally merciful to you. So now, yes, you have excellent credit, excellent status before your Heavenly Father because you are clothed in the righteousness of Jesus, your Savior, in the waters of holy baptism. And because of that, now you too then can be wise and generous for the work of his kingdom. The psalmist writes in the Old Testament, Psalm 116, verse 2, and we often sing this in one of our offertories, What shall I render to the Lord for all of his benefits or his blessings to me? And the management of his gifts to you. What will you pledge? What will you pledge? What will you decide to give back for the ongoing mission of our congregation? Nurturing disciples by preaching, teaching, and reaching. We need your ongoing financial support. Will you tie the full 10% for the Lord's work? Will you go above that as God has certainly blessed you in your life? Or maybe if you haven't been giving at all, you prayerfully consider giving 1% or 2% for the Lord's work. The Apostle Paul writes these words in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 to 8. He who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must do as he has made up his mind, namely prayerfully, not reluctantly, or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance so that you may always have enough of everything and may provide in abundance for every good work. Provide in abundance because you have been provided for. The Lord says you will always have enough. He blesses you with your daily bread always. So be not concerned. And continue to do the good works that God has called you to do. So after hearing God's word, and being a wise, being a shrewd steward, a shrewd manager of his gifts, and as you continue to live under the cross of Jesus Christ and his mercy for you, and as you continue to serve him and to serve others, receiving faithfully his gifts each and every week here, how will you prayerfully respond? Pray about it. Think about it. Take some time in the coming weeks to do that. And then continue to manage the gifts that God has given to you wisely. As you continue to budget wisely for your family, as you continue to save for them and for their future, your children's future, as you continue to invest some as well, leaving a legacy for your own family, also make sure that first and foremost, you pledge a percentage back to the work of the ministry and the legacy, the eternal legacy of God's ongoing work here and throughout God's kingdom. So that word and sacrament ministry can continue to not just stay the same, but can expand into reaching more with the gospel through more servants. And as you pray, then consider the future needs of our congregation. We're prayerfully considering this next Tuesday at our voters' assembly, calling a second pastor, a second full-time pastor to serve here in word and sacrament, sacrament ministry. So consider how you might maybe up your giving just a little this year to support God's work here and in reaching into community, into our community. Invest in things that will last. Invest in God's kingdom. Invest in true riches 
lasting for eternity. By using the little things that God has given to us, we are able then to make new friends for eternity. Lastly, then, as God has blessed us in abundance, we we sing every week. And I, I pray that you'll focus, continue to focus on those words as you also prayerfully consider how you will manage the Lord's gifts for you. We sing, To Thee, God, our first fruits give, in hymn 781. So may it be true for all of us as His dear children that we give off of the top of what He has blessed us with and not from the bottom, from the first fruits that he has given to us, giving back with our offerings and tithes. And as we sing these words then every week as the offering is brought forward, we also sing all that we have is thine, God's, alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. He's trusting us to manage it wisely. All our possessions, dear friends in Christ, are truly not ours, but only ours to manage. They do belong to the Master who has entrusted them into our care. So let us continue to pray that the Lord would help us, help us to be shrewd stewards. Help us as he continues to help us and provide for us and strengthen us in our life of faith as his dear children, forgiven by him and shown mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. And we pray the peace of God which surpasses all understanding would always keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.